Hello everyone and welcome back to another D4H Extension Path video. Once again, I'm Billy. I'm an Emergency Management Solutions Specialist here at D4H Technologies. Over the past few weeks to month, we've presented you with the Community Lifelines Extension Path, which was brand new this year. We've also presented you a reminder of our Mass Casualty Extension Path, which I hope to go into more detail in the future as we have brand new released HICS HICS form specifically for hospital and healthcare management. So that'll be a future video, but today is all about COOP. Now I've spoken to many customers, many people in my network, and COOP is one thing that is just integral to emergency management. And it's also a great opportunity for you to track information, run different COOP exercises, and just practice COOP continuity of operations within your business or your agency or your jurisdiction. So with this extension pack, which is quite literally fresh off the press, there hasn't been a lot of iterations of these extension packs, but I'm hoping that with this video, we can leverage my network and also a few other customers for feedback, what you like, what you don't like, what you wanna see from this Coop extension pack, or maybe it's perfect as is, and you're ready to integrate it into your software. But keep in mind, everything I show you throughout this video is customizable, completely tailored, to whatever you want to achieve with your agency and let's jump into it so the whole purpose of this coop extension pack right you're going to be provided with seven different status boards and that's a lot of status boards to plug into your software for any incident or any sort of occurrence with these seven status boards we're going to go through alternative facilities communications the corrective action tracker essential functions orders of succession test training and exercises, and vital records management. Also in the form section, I created a delegation of authority form. So what you're noticing is that I really took all the elements that FEMA provides for a COOP plan and I broke it down into different operational applications for you to actually activate, practice, and utilize your COOP items during an emergency. So starting first with alternative facilities, and what you'll notice just for fun for dummy data, for this entire presentation or just brief little video is that I used different characters and information from the sitcom, The Office. So hope you enjoyed that content, but otherwise jumping back into it. Alternative facilities. So again, as most of you know, for COOP and for different processes, alternative facilities are crucial for maintaining operations when your primary locations are inaccessible. And these can be pre-identified sites to ensure that your team can continue working without any significant disruptions safeguarding vital services and functions. So as you see here, I preloaded some alternative facilities, their statuses, and I mapped them. In each of them, there's also a more in-depth form that outlines potential connections to essential functions, number of staff, telecommuting, addresses, classifications, agreement files, specifications. So again, you can get really nitty gritty with the different options that you have for alternative facilities. And one thing that I point out here is that if you've noticed, we have these module headers. So shout out to our customer service specialist, GP, who provided these items. So again, it shows you the whole potential of what you can really achieve and create with tracking different items for COOP. Now, moving on from alternative facilities, let's jump into communications. Similarly, again, all the elements necessary in terms of communications for continuity of operations, reliable communication, as as we know, the backbone of any real COOP plan. And establishing communication systems guarantees that your team stays connected, informed, and able to communicate throughout the duration of an incident. So again, you have the opportunity to fill out an in-depth form tracking your communication systems. Now, I'm gonna kind of jump between the test training and exercises and corrective action tracker because that kind of you know ties in to the relationship of exercises and how you want to improve different elements of your agency. So, with the corrective action tracker, starting here first, very simple in terms of just writing in your information for what you need for corrective action. You wanna learn from past incidents, and you want to identify lessons learned, address gaps, and implement changes to enhance future operations. So as we see here, we have different statuses, corrective actions tied to specific capabilities. And if you've noticed the little lock sign, it's because you can also sign off 
on these corrective actions. So again, I created a very simple, straightforward, connected form that you can track all of your corrective actions on a status board, but also in a form content that then you can also export and look at later. Now, test training and exercises, as we know, coop plans should be exercised. And again, exercise name, tying into the theme of the office sitcom, running a fire drill, how frequent and what the last state of that drill was or that test or that exercise. And then you can tie in specific corrective actions from that exercise, whether it's coop related or just in general, but falls into that continuity bucket. Now, most importantly, with continuity of operations, we want to prioritize essential functions. We want to know what do we need in order to survive a continuity event, right? What are our missing essential functions or MEFs and our primary mission essential functions or other, right? So if you notice with this status board, again, I don't really have locations tied to this, but again, customizable, tailorable, you can add in locations or any other details that you need for the specific status board. But with essential functions, I've tied every single custom essential function to its mission type, but then its national essential function as well. So you can track your different FEMA requirements throughout the continuity planning process. And again, you can tie in contact information, essential employees, estimated return to function, and other sort of key tasks needed for this specific essential function. So again, the kind of like thing that I'm emphasizing, right? With your coop plan, you obviously have it in a static PDF, but imagine you could break it down into steps or to actions or to little bite-sized chunks that allow you to actually practice this in action to apply it on the flip of a switch. Or if you need to activate a continuity plan, you can just start the incident, load up the status boards, you have it all preloaded with your coop information, and then you just plug and play as needed. Wrapping up with the last few items, Orders of secession, pretty self-explanatory uh, for those that know continuity of operations, but then also in general, it just means who is going to secede a specific position or role, right? So again, director of Dunder Mifflin, although I don't have these specific titles for, again, the office sitcom, but again, showing you that if the director is no longer able to fulfill their duties, you then have the order of secession in terms of who will be taking over that role if needed. Again, really simple. You have a table, you have your role, you can interconnect it with different forms, different status boards. That's the goal. Our last status board before I briefly jump to forms is going to be vital records. In today's day and age with data and documents, vital records are essential. Safeguarding records ensures that critical information is accessible and secure and can support decision-making and continuity during any sort of emergency. So, with vital records here, again, a specific vital record, the format, if it's located at a specific facility. So what I'm gonna do here, is just refresh my vital records. And you're gonna see that I have my vital records tracked throughout this map. Three locations here actually. So if I click into here, you can see the different types of vital records. So again, geotagging, locational capability to know where these vital records are located, whether electronically or hard copied, how often they need to be updated or maintained, and then again, a specific form to fill out more information. Lastly, on top of the seven status boards that we can provide with this extension pack, we have a delegation of authority form. And keep in mind, again, maybe status boards aren't your cup of tea. You can create a bunch of forms or one big form to practice these continuity options or to transfer your plan to an electronic platform that allows you to break it down and interconnect it with our software. Delegation of authority, somewhat similar in some regards to order of secession, right? Delegation of authority clarifies decision-making responsibilities during an emergency. So you can pre-assign authority to specific individuals if you need certain things to be achieved if that primary function is not available. So again, in this form, very FEMA coded. It just writes down the purpose, the delegation, the authority, and appropriate approvals. And again, everything can be customized. Everything can be tailored. Everything can be easily managed at your fingertips. So in 10 minutes, I just ran through the entirety of this brand new extension pack 
We're hoping to push it very soon to be available for customers. If you love it as is, shoot me a message. I'd be more than happy to zip it to you and send it to integrate into your own D4H. If you have feedback, comments, ways to improve this extension pack, I'm always open to learn. So thank you all very much. Drop me a comment below and I hope to see you in the next video.